you guys seem to enjoy when I suffer on Greyhound, so here I am taking Greyhound home for Thanksgiving from Philly to Boston. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, beloved. Boston leaves at 7 and sharp at 6.40. No one's in line yet, so good as far as me getting a good seat possibly goes, bad as far as who knows where this bus is goes. I was worried this would happen. Everyone got up for some reason, but now it's all like, oh, we're in line. Gotta get a good seat. I mean, I don't want to budge. I'm right up front. Passengers waiting on our 7 o'clock service is going to Newark, New Jersey. The GW Bridge, Hartford, and Boston. That schedule is also running 15 minutes by schedule. Of course, but you know, communication. We'll see if they actually hold to the 15 minutes. There's two buses just sitting there, so I don't know what the deal with that is. Up at this time. Seven o'clock. Only like ten minutes late. Oh, there's the bus. It's a Bolt bus. Oh, this will be fun. Basically, Greyhound used to own Bolt, and then Bolt died in the pandemic, and now they just kind of recycled the buses for their own use. Oh, sign for Boston. I think this bus is sold out. So let's do a seat review before I get a seat made. Bolt bus uses cloth seats apparently, versus the leather the Greyhound uses. We've got an outlet. We've got my massive bag. We've got waste baskets slash barf bags and footrest. It's similar enough in terms of when these to Greyhound. These buses also have screens, although I don't think they're really in use. I guess it reclines. We'll test that out before someone sits behind us. Okay, in fairness, it goes pretty far back. I can now say I've taken Bolt bus. We're heading out 25 minutes late, which, you know, could be worse. And also, <laughs> look at that. This bus is actually fairly quiet. I think maybe we have a lot of people getting on in Newark or something. But that's a solid two hours to, you know, sleep. Yeah. I woke up in Newark. Not a huge crowd. Maybe we got lucky, but I'm not holding my breath. Also, I had a dream that we arrived in Newark and the driver announced what time we arrived. And it was like on time and everyone started clapping. I thought that was real life. It was just a dream. It's 9.06. Oh, 10 minutes late. All right. And a decent amount of people getting off, which is good to see. We're heading out about 20 minutes late. Our next stop is not the New York Port Authority, but the New York George Washington Bridge Bus Terminal because that's where Greyhound stops when it runs through New York. Seeing these tracks next to us reminds me, why didn't I take Amtrak? Because Amtrak had already hiked its prices for Thanksgiving in August when I was booking tickets. So it would have been $250 versus the 36 I paid for this. Come on, Amtrak. These marshes between Newark and New York are just fascinating. We're heading into Fort Lee, still not much traffic. Here we go under the George Washington Bridge. There's traffic, but it's moving. Like, it's really not bad. Knock on wood, but like, we're pretty close at this point. We're now on the exclusive off-ramp into the terminal. I love how it just kind of dumps you inside. Jeez, I really should have sat on the inside of the bus. This window is so scrunchy with the sun. Looks like we only have a couple offs here. That's because when you book a Greyhound ticket to New York, you have to like specify Port Authority or George Washington Bridge. I think most people will just pick the Port Authority, not realizing that the George Washington Bridge is also an option. But also, I mean, I guess if you live in Upper Manhattan, it's useful. Also, there's only one to two buses a day that serve the George Washington Bridge bus terminal, and in classic weird Greyhound fashion, it's often way more expensive to go there than the Port Authority. Here's where all the buses sleep. Mostly dollar vans, it looks like. Poor rat. Oh no, on the side of the highway. This terminal is very well optimized for buses going over the bridge to New Jersey, but not very well optimized for buses going anywhere east. All right, we get to take some local Manhattan streets for a bit. Here we go under the Cross Bronx Expressway. Thanks, Robert Moses. Now traveling on local Bronx roads, I guess. You do not get any room from this on-ramp to merge onto the highway. That's insane. So now we're on the Cross Bronx Expressway. I guess, I think, I don't know. Okay, now we're on the major Deegan Expressway. I think maybe it's just like a weird process to get here or something. I don't know. Thanks, Robert Moses. Welcome to Westchester County. Put it on the right side, Ned. I 
think as a general rule, Greyhound's a lot more pleasant in the summer than the winter. Because in the summer, they make the bus cold, you can just bring a sweater and deal with it. But in the winter, it's really hot, and you're just kind of stuck. We've got a massive exodus here in Hartford. There's a ton of empty seat pairs now. There's definitely people getting on, but I'm hoping it's not gonna be quite as full as it just was. Also, who knew Philly to Hartford was such a big market? I would've thought Boston would've been a bigger deal. I just realized the stickers here still say Bolt Bus. I wonder if tvboltbus.com still works. Oh. TV Bolt Bus, oh my gosh. How about that? We're off right on time. Goodbye, actually Greyhound branded bus. Next stop, Boston. Hey, Ned Lamont gave us this HOV lane. I mean, there's no real traffic to beat, but you know, it still feels special. Shows you how much I've been paying attention to this trip. We've been on the mass turnpike for like a while, which means we've been out of Connecticut for a while, which means I didn't get to say goodbye to Ned. Sorry, Ned. There's the commuter rail, and now here we go into the bus terminal. Against all the odds, we've arrived about 10 minutes early. I mean, I guess Greyhound's just getting, but oh wait, it's bull. 